Frank, let's keep cruising along here. You mentioned it last night. You were in the building for Canucks Blackhawks, and it's Vancouver picking up another win. Three in a row and a three-point night for JT Miller, who is off to a hell of a start this year. Six points for him through six games in Vancouver. They've got points in five of six as well. What did you make of your first in-person viewing of the Vancouver Canucks? Well, they're a team that's building and and heading in the right direction. I mean, look, this was an odyssey of a road trip, two games in Florida, over to Philly, then Chicago on your way home. And there were a bunch of days in between. They'd been in Chicago since Saturday night. You never know what the team's going to respond with on a Tuesday after that. But for a team that started off as one of the last teams to get a win, they now head home 3-1-2 and two, and totally with a different feel than a team that started off with two blown third period leads to kick off their season and a year with some expectations. One, Kevin Lankinen is absolutely the story of the Canucks season. Two, JT Miller continues to grind. Um, he is someone that was questionable, I think, maybe for last night's game. I suspect he's dealing with a shoulder injury. No confirmation one way or the other, but the way that he exited that game in Philly early, then came back. Um, he's, he's like one of the NHL's ultimate grinders. I think he's missed seven games as a Canuck. Four of those were asymptomatic positive with COVID. Um, he is someone that just is a warrior that wants to play. And he's, I, to me, he's the engine and heartbeat of that team. Still some question marks in my view about the Canucks. Can they move the puck as efficiently as they need to on their back end? I think it gets thin in a hurry in that department. Um, once you get past their top pair and will their goaltending continue to hold up? I think it will. And, and maybe the third question would be, how do you find a way to get Elias Pettersson going? Because there were maybe some moments last night where he looked a little bit more engaged, but still missing a lot. Yeah, the Canucks have spent a lot of money trying to find wingers to slide next to Elias Pettersson. And I did see some people over in Canucks land yesterday talking about how, hey, maybe the solution was internal. He, Like you said, he did have some good moments playing with Nils Hoaglander yesterday uh, as Hoaglander got the bump up to the second line. Uh, we are going to get to smoke, fire, false alarm in a second, Frank, but maybe a little early one for you because it's tied into the Canucks. You mentioned that Thatcher Demko was skating and getting in work for the Canucks the other day. Uh, his return, smoke, fire, false alarm. Are we still a ways away? Uh, we are probably still a ways away. Um, I think the easiest way to explain it is that the Canucks are leaving this in Thatcher Demko's hands to tell them when he's comfortable to return. Watched him on the ice on Tuesday, well after their optional morning skate. I posted a video. He was essentially planted in the crease on one knee, he did this on both sides, and there was a coach in the corner on either side with a bungee cord that was basically trying to pull him out of the crease, and it was his job to essentially stabilize himself. Stability is the key word when it comes to this rehab. It's such a weird injury. He hasn't been able to find that stability in the knee with this popliteus muscle behind it that has caused him some discomfort. And, you know, I, I think... The nice thing for the Canucks is that the way Lankinen has played, 933 save percentage so far this season, he's basically supplanted Arthur Shilovs as the, the guy that the Canucks are probably going to let run with the ball here, that they don't really have, they're not forced to, to bring him back or try and push this. They can give him all the time that he needs. What's up, hockey fans? If you enjoyed that video, then you need to be hitting the subscribe button right here at Daily Faceoff. Exclusive interviews and analysis from our hockey insider, Frank Saravalli, fantasy updates from Brock Sagan, and a daily live show at noon Eastern, Monday through Friday. You don't want to miss any of the fantastic content, so hit that subscribe button.